Hello Park Hills artists. We are going to look at watercolor today. Um, a technique called wet on wet. We are going to try this for a sketchbook cover design. So this will be the background of your sketchbook. So I'd like you to really carefully think about your colors when you're choosing. Let's look at the materials you have first today. So we have paper, pencil, watercolors, yours will look a little different than mine, and brushes, which will also look a little different because I'm painting at home. So if you're at home, you're going to follow the same directions and use whatever you have. If you got the watercolors that I sent home, you're, you might just have a small brush and it'll take you a little while, but you can still use that. If you have other brushes at home, um, you can also use them, even if they are not uh, watercolor brushes. So you have water and you have um, different options for containers. So this is actually a little bowl, um, a glass bowl. I like to use glass so then the watercolor rinses right out. Mason jars work really, really well. So if you're at home, you're going to find something that you can put just a little bit of water in and make sure that you're working on a surface that won't get ruined if you get it wet. So I'm gonna put this bowl aside because I'm not gonna use that. Um, I'm gonna put my watercolors aside for a little bit and we're gonna talk about the brushes. Um, I particularly don't have a watercolor brush at home today. If you're at school, you have a big fluffy one you'll use to put the water on and then a skinnier one like this that you'll use to put the color on. So let's see how this works. So this is called wet on wet. And the first thing I want you to remember is to put your name with a pencil and whatever your third grade code is. So if you are Mrs. Becker, it'll be 3SB. If you are three Mrs. Speck, and if you're at home, it's gonna be 3SS. So I'll go with that for today. Um, I would like you to remember to flip it so that you're not painting with the side with your name. If you forget, it's okay. That's all you need the pencil for. So here we go. So wet on wet means you start with water. So if you're at home um, or at school, I'd like you to use this, the biggest brush that you have and start at one end of your paper and you're gonna just get it wet. You're gonna notice a shine. If you get down a little bit, bend down on your, you know, squat down with your knees, you can see the water um, collect on the page and it gets shiny. Again, make sure you're working on a surface that's not gonna um, be ruined by water, but you can see the shine. All right, then I'm gonna work with cool colors today. And since I have a bigger brush, I'm gonna leave that brush in there. So I like when I don't have a watercolor brush, a true water brush, I take kind of a, a brush this size and I start with my first color. Count to about 10, four, five, six, get some more water, seven, eight, nine, 10, why? Well, because when you count to 10, you get a nice puddle of paint. And you don't want to start too soon from the palette, which is what I'm holding, um, because then you won't get enough color. So the, the, when you stir, um, it gets more paint. So you can kind of see, I didn't even brush that part and it's spreading. So I'm gonna leave that blue. I'm gonna rinse my brush, I'm gonna show you. Use the bottom of your mason jar with your brush to the bottom. And let's pick another kind of cool color, which would be purple. Count to 10. Seven, eight, nine, 10. Now watch. I'm just gonna touch this together. I'm not gonna go right over the blue because I don't really want it to blend too much. I'm gonna maybe take this out to the edges. Again, this is um, like an exploration or just fun. So I'm gonna go back into my paint Again, you're starting at one end of the paper at a time and moving your way to the other end. Um, I would suggest or encourage you to use about two or three colors. Probably gonna add maybe some, let's add some yellow. Actually, even though it's not a cool color, let's see what yellow looks like. So even with this smaller brush, the water is going on pretty easy. So I'm gonna stay with this brush. So you'll find what you like to work with and again, I can see that this part right here is really shiny, so I'm ready to go rinse. I'm gonna show you, I gotta rinse my brush again before I start a new color. So let's get yellow. 
We'll see what happens. I'm not so sure. I see a little green in the yellow palette because my brush wasn't clean completely from the blue. So the yellow is not as dark, so I'm gonna stir a little bit longer. But it's still a nice yellow. There we go. I'm gonna put a little yellow in here. I'm gonna watch though because yellow and purple might make brown. It kind of looks like confetti colors. Oh, I like that. Okay, so once you get halfway, you're gonna flip it if you want. I like working from the, my, because I'm right-handed, flip it. And then I'm gonna decide. You can change your mind as you go, as you look. It's kind of just, you know, a fun thing that you don't plan out. Put the water down first. If you wanna go back to your bigger brush, if you have one, go ahead and get more water. The more water you have, the more the paint will spread. Oops, sorry about that. If you get it too wet though, and you go over it too many times, you'll get holes in your paper. All right, so let's figure out the color wise. Let's try the blue again, since I already had blue. One more brush of water, and we're gonna start watching it. Watch it run. Ooh, I like that. So it might make green there where you see the yellow. I'm gonna rinse my brush and let that just do its thing. Grab that purple that I made and try the same thing. So you, depending on the paper you have, your paper might be a little bit less, um, uh, it might not take the water the same. So you'll notice that when you're working in art that depending on what your your, your materials are, um, it might not work exactly. Oh, I like that too. I'm just gonna let that go and I'm done. So when you see something that you're happy with, you just kind of let it sit. Now there's a puddle right here so when you pick it up or um, the teacher helps you get it to the drying rack, it might run a little bit. Um, so you have to make sure that you get two hands under it and it might run um, and you hold it level. I mean, if you'd like, you can actually do the swirl too a little bit. I don't like to do that too much. Um, it will dry. So those puddles will dry just like that. Okay, so your brushes can be rinsed in your water and then I'd like you to take your water cups or your, you know, your water at home and dump it out in the kitchen sink. Um, and make sure, one more good tip, it's really not smart to close this and carry it because there are puddles and it's, you know, it's wet in the, the palettes. So the watercolor palettes at school or at home should be set somewhere um, safe, off to the side, let them dry overnight, and then you can close them in the morning. Okay, brushes clean up really easy. Um, you can dry them with a paper towel and you're done. This is called wet on wet because you're adding water first by itself and then you're hand picking your colors um, and adding them. Have fun. Thank you.